and greetings once again, family, friends, associates. Um, this is a short video uh, on uh, herbs in Africa, specifically Ghana. People say Africa like it's a country. I don't speak of it in those terms, but there are, I'm sure, a lot of cultural similarities um, across borders and tribal and linguistic groups and regions. And I would probably think that the use of natural herbs and remedies is a common practice probably on the continent, just not just in Ghana. But I'm speaking about Ghana because that's where most of my experience has been. Um, they have um, herbs in Ghana, powders. Um, a lot of the herbs are tree bark, bark from trees, real a wood actually. Not just the outer covering, but the wood from the tree itself. Um, the, I was in Ghana in, I think it was in 2011. I got a good friend named Tongo. And a lot of times when I would go, I would get a cold, seems like, right after I got there. I think it's my body adjusting in different ways to a new environment. And so my partner said, uh, we got to take you to the market and get some herbs. You're African now, so you got to get on the local traditional uh, medicinal things. So sure enough, we went to Nima Market. I've got a video of Nima Market online. We went to Nima Market, and um, he brought four or five different um, items that he called herbs. I was expecting to see something like in the herb stores here, the natural food stores and the grocery stores where you have bottles, even in Walmart, with capsules and pills, and maybe even some powder and leaf. But what he got instead was pieces of tree bark. I'm going to show you. This first one is called Yellow. And actually, I got a good friend from Cameroon named Rose in Minnesota. And she turned me on, introduced me to this in Minnesota in 2008. <laughs> and the way me and Rose would do it, we put a piece in a shot of whiskey. She said it's good for your immune system. And we would, you know, do it like that. And then she gave me a lot of it. Um, and I took it home and marinated it in um, vitamin uh, water, lemon juice and let it sit for three or four days, and I would drink it like that. So that's the first one, it's called yellow. That's what they call it in Cameroon, and they also call it the same name in Ghana. This is another one. Um, I don't have a name for this one, but this is for the immune system, it's for energy, and actually really what that one's for is for that male thing. It's like the local low-dose Viagra. It's not really like Viagra, I've never had Viagra, never used it, but I know what it is. And this is supposed to um, increase that sexual potency. A lot of different stuff in Africa. And we got uh, ginger, which we know what ginger is. You get it in the grocery store in the U.S. And I think he got one called cocoa. And uh, he told me how to prepare it. He said get a clay pot. Don't have one to show you. And wash it, break it up, uh, and uh, put it in the pot. Bring it to a boil. Let it cool down. And when it cools down, you just drink maybe a coffee cup full of it every day until it's gone. And while you're drinking it, you put these herbs outside in the sun and let the sun re-energize them and give them more potency or, or, or replenish the potency that they've lost from the cooking process the first time. And you do it again. After you finish one batch, do another batch. I, did it, I do them three times. Interestingly enough, um, I'd had malaria twice. The second time was in April of 2000. And, um, 12, I think. I started these herbs right after that second malaria bout and never got malaria again. My girlfriend at the time, her children, and everybody living in the compound around me had it three or four times until I was there for 18 months on that trip. And I didn't, I mean, after I was there for 18 months after I got malaria the second time. Never, and I haven't had it since then. And so, when I ask people what these herbs are for, that yellow in particular in the market, they'll say the herb is for, um, fever and malaria brings fever they don't say it's for malaria they just say it's for fever but i'm convinced in my mind i'm not suggesting anybody else do what i do but i do it like jesus religiously when i'm in africa and even doing when i'm not there i drink them herbs every day and i think for sure that it's probably kept kept that malaria out because i don't take the malaria pills and i think this herb has kept me from getting malaria what happens is Anything you do every day, it builds up in your bloodstream. Just like the pill that they advise travelers to take. You take it every day while you're there, before you go, and after you come back. 
keep it in your bloodstream. So when the mosquito bites that's carrying that malaria vector, it won't um, take hold in your system. And I'm, I, I believe this yellow does the same thing for me, probably for anybody that tried it. It's real nasty and real bitter, so a lot of people don't fool with it because they can't stand bitter. But if you go to the hospital, it's worse than being bitter. <laughs> Shots and surgery and, you know, all kind of stuff. Anyway, those are two uh, malaria deals. So the first one, I think, kept me from malaria, the, that herb. Um, they got herbs for all kind of stuff. They sell them on the street. They sell them in the market. Some of them are actually powders and potions. And uh, a lot of them are wood chips, you know, pieces of tree bark. And they claim all kind of miraculous stuff, you know. Uh, whether they work or not, I don't know, you know. But... Um, the thing is, uh, if it's natural, I don't think it can hurt you. It won't have any side effects like the medication you get from the doctor. So, um, some of the things on herbs. Another thing, had a, you know, I'm at that age where that prostate enlarges for some of us males, men. And so I was having a real problem around that same time in 2013. And I won't go into the details, but I was having a serious problem. So... Luckily, I just ran across um, some Indian herbs that was advertised, and the background was very impressive, and the detail was very impressive. So I tried them. They didn't cost a whole lot. Tried those. They helped immediately. Didn't stop the problem, but it greatly reduced it. And then, uh, a couple months later, I found some more herbs in the tribe of Judah uh, herb store in um, Kaswa in Ghana. They had one in Kaswa. They had one at uh, Kanishi Market, tribe of herb um, tribe of Judah herb store and these were some pills from Australia they were um, in a bottle you know like we get in the US and they were herbs and I tried this it's for the prostate straighten it out cleared it up all the way so now I, can, I know what to look for even in America I can go to Walmart and get things and you know over the counter and they are very effective and they work so um, those two uh, situations for sure the malaria and the prostate. Natural remedies, natural things that work for me. I'm not a doctor, can't guarantee anybody else, but there's a lot of stuff out here in life. If you know what to look for and know how to do, it can be very beneficial. It calls for some discipline sometimes, too. So, um, those two things. Uh, let me see. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to uh, say, I got a friend. Um, in America, she was from Nigeria, and she talked about how old some of her grand, her, I think it was her grandmother, was almost 100 years old, or maybe it was 100 at the time, in good shape, said she'd never been to the doctor. And these are not poor people. She come from one of the elite backgrounds of wealthy families like the Huxtables, Cliff and Claire on TV, that's her background and lineage. But her father's mother was an old woman. She lived in the village, and she never left, and she never went to a doctor. This was years ago when she was about 100 years old then. My lady friend there, her grandmother, I know her. She's 99 years old. Sharp as a tack. Don't forget nothing. Man just as clear. Walks to church <laughs> every day of every Sunday by herself. You know, she's real strong. And her mind is so sharp. No way Alzheimer's and forgetting memory. Her mind, her memory's probably better than mine. And she appears to be in good health. She's 99 years old. And I've watched her a little bit through the years. Um, she said that uh, her father lived to be 126. You hear me? The 99-year-old's father was 126. Good friend of mine, Justice, says that his, one of his grandparents was 137. Now, I don't know. I didn't see the people. You know, we can debate it and argue about it. <laughs> you know, and doubt it, I guess. You know, I don't know. But that's what they told me. I, and I, I've heard it said a number of times from a number of people how old some of their ancestors lived. Not, not back in the old days, but in, in recent times. One last point I make on longevity, you know, the reason I'm making this point, herbs and longevity, uh, maybe they're connected, lifestyle, environment, you know. But in the West, normally, all we hear about Africa is early death rates. You know, they say the average lifespan in African countries is 45 years. So you think everybody's dead at an early age. People do die early from different stuff like they do in the U.S. But some of them live an awfully long time. I don't know if they're really the exception to the rule. I imagine they are. They're, ex they're the exception to the rule in the U.S. when they reach 100. Not many of us are going that far. So, they got people over there living a long time. The Ashantahini is the paramount chief in Africa, no, in Ghana. He's the paramount of the Ashanti. He's the biggest king in Ghana, one of the biggest on the continent. I was there when his mother died. 2017, I think it was. It was like a three-day state funeral. 
It was almost like the president dying. It was big, big, big. Everybody came here from everywhere. They closed Kumasi down. And when they buried her, the whole city had to stay indoors between certain time in the evening to the next morning. You know, and if you were caught on the street, you, was, you, were, you were at risk. Mortal danger, for real. It's the kind of power and influence that Shantahini and the Shanti uh, kingdom has in Ghana. Anyway, to make a long story short, his mother was 111 years old. This ain't in ancient times, it's recently. They know how old their parents are. They got records now. She was 111 years old. And up until, I think, the last couple of years, she was in good shape, strong as an ox. Here's the real kicker. After she died, they had it in the newspaper, and they set it on during the funeral. There's one inside the palace. She's lived there her whole life. She saw Deshantahini's mother being born. She was still alive. Deshantahini's mother is 111. This lady was still alive. And she saw the Shantahini's mother when she was born. They said this lady was 130 years old. She was still living in 2007, 130 years old. I mentioned that to some of my Ghanaian friends. They said because she never left the palace, she's got stuff in there that they're giving her that they're doing that has kept her alive. It's something about that environment, something about those secrets that people know that are beyond imagination and comprehension and understanding and, and belief for most people in the West. It's real, whether you believe it or not. I think some of this stuff is real. It's beyond imagination. For real. 130 years old. That's what they said this lady was. They said this in 2017 and she was still alive. So, I don't know. Part of it might come from the, um, the natural medicines that they use. Um, maybe they're not eating all the food that we eat. I don't know. It might be magic and spiritual stuff involved. I don't know. But the fact is, some of these Africans live an exceptionally long period of time. We'll see on the news, the oldest person in the world. Just died in Hong Kong or China somewhere. There's 114 years old. That's the ones you know about. There's people on the planet that you don't know about, that you haven't searched out, that you don't deal with on a regular basis and don't have much information and history on. We just know about what we know about. There's other people on the planet, too, that have lived that long and still live in that long. So I don't know. Maybe it's connected with the herbs. But I just wanted to say this little bit about the herbs um, in Africa. There are things you can do in there benefits to be gained, yeah, from less developed places because they still know what works for what. In America, they used to know back in the old days, your grandmothers and grandparents used to know what to do for certain ailments and how to cure them, you know, but now everything is a, a chemical drug, a surgery, and money, and pharmaceuticals, and they boohoo and uh, have you afraid to take even a vitamin, thinking there's nothing to it, and they run you away from things that, might, that are cheap, inexpensive, within your reach, and might save your life. So anyway, I just want to say this about herbs in Africa. Peace out. Uh, don't forget, please sub subscribe to my channel. Put a lot of videos out there. Hopefully, there will be information that you can use. Um, be entertaining, some of it, informative, you know, insightful. So subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. button buy one of my books, Rolling with the Hot Sauce. Um, uh, Cape Coast, Coming Home Through the Door, No Return. And the African Guide to Success in America by Walter Ray, all available on Amazon.com. Peace out.